flash back to the 70s. Just like in fashion, design trends can also make a comeback. Sometimes they never leave. And right now, 70s inspired design is back in the home. Hi, my name is Kevin Gray from Kevin Gray Design. So we do high-end renovations, also interior design services from new bathrooms, kitchens, and most importantly, my knack for decorating and mixing period pieces. This is a 1972 building, and I fell in love with the building when I saw it. I love working with the Roaring 70s. Welcome to my home. We tour Kevin's beautiful home, inspired by his love for the 70s, on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. I love following design trends, but what I truly love about home decor is that it allows you to express your personality. You can create a mood or, in this case, transport yourself to another decade. This 1,800 square foot home has two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a powder room. It has been completely updated and meticulously curated with original 70s decor pieces. Kevin, welcome to SoFlo Home Project. Thank you, Elena. We're happy to have you here with us today. Now, of course, we have toured your projects before on yes. previous episodes, but now we're in your personal home, which is an extra special treat. I always love touring with designers because we get to see how you design your own space. And this particular home is inspired by your love of a certain decade. Thank you, it is. It's, it came from the building, which is vintage 70s. So I pulled the furniture in and then I mixed my own designs here as well. Custom. So, Kevin, we're in the living room. Yep. Um, beautiful, spacious, great views. But I, I want to talk a little bit about what you did with the entry. It's cool. You feel a 70s vibe, but it's so chic. There was this amazing sculptural light fixture above and great wallpaper. Well, that was a fixture that came with the building when I got here. And that was the only thing that I liked. I call it my Star Trek Enterprise. It's so cool. Yeah. And I've got the horizontal paper, the vintage Bruton console, and just from there I went to town with just keeping it simple. And you used through the paper new materials yep. that still bring out that vibe of the 70s yep. era. And now we're in the main area, yep. the living space, nice open area, sweeping views. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about what's behind us because this is a lot of sofa and it is gorgeous. And I'm seeing a curved wall. So something tells me you didn't buy it like this. No. <laughs> when I walked into the apartment, I thought, Hmm, 18 feet of tufted silk, you can't go wrong. So Definitely not. I had to make it in three sections to get it up the elevator, and it's comfortable. I, I want to try it you out, so let's, it let's out. see how comfortable. This is great. Sure. And what you did here, which I want to share with our viewers, I think is a great tip. You've got a curved wall, yep. and a lot of the times people often ask us, how do we deal with curved walls? How do you furnish in front of it? You, you kind of custom made this, but it really maximized your space. Yes, it maximized the space and it grounded the room, which was most important because with the curved walls and the views, I needed to ground the room. So you got a ton of seating, a yep. great look. There you go. You have a lot of different finishes that all work so well together. The mixed metals, we've got the glass, because that's something also very important in bringing in a specific decade uh, or era of design. Before the 70s, it was mostly wood. It was very commercial. And the 70s through bending metals and glasses and brasses and bronze, it really transformed the furniture industry. I mixed the 70s inspired stools, which are twisted brass. I did the dark upholstery to tie in with the tapisserie. And then I designed the table to work with the Madagascar top, Lucite base, which works with everything else. Absolutely, I love Lucite, I think. Yeah. And we're seeing a lot of that in home design it's again. Coming, yeah. So that trend coming back, you're seeing it in table bases and yes. stools and chairs, like the legs of a lot of different pieces of furniture. So that is a nod to the yeah. 70s. And uh, you've kind of bought it nicely throughout as well. Yeah, thank you. So Kevin, why the 70s? Why this decade? You're a designer, you've seen a lot, you know a lot. What is special to you about that particular time period in design that you wanted that in your personal home? Um, I think it probably came up because I grew up in the 70s. I went to school in New York, transferred to Paris, and that's when I saw all of the wild designs. And I think those are the pieces I bought. 
So it's really a curated collection of things throughout your life. Yes. Then I looked for an apartment. I walked into the Palm Bay and I said, this is it. My, my pieces will fall into place with this building. Now, does the fact that the building was built in that era? It was built in 1972. Was that important to you to it bring wasn't, in that full design? Yes, it was. But more importantly, it was the curves of the building and we're floating in the water. So it's unique. It is. It's a beautiful floor plan and I cannot wait to see more. And we are going to check that out when Great. we come back. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we check out the kitchen that was completely renovated to capture the beautiful Miami views. I'm Tat with FHIA, and we're gonna learn why it's so important for you to be involved in the in-home consultation when you're deciding to do your next home improvement project on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're here with interior designer Kevin Gray touring his own home. Gorgeous condo, sweeping views of Miami. Kevin, there's a specific decade we are saying that you've bought in to the decor throughout your home of that time period of the 70s. Talk to us about how you continue to bring that in now in this area right outside the kitchen, sort of in, I guess, the foyer. This was the foyer. Actually, I had to open it up. It was very narrow. There was a closed coat closet here. You're standing where the powder room used to be. So you're in this narrow hallway. And my first inclination was just to get rid of a coat closet. Who needs that in Florida? And Absolutely. then get rid of a powder room and have the entrance to my kitchen from the front door. Because there's a lot of interesting, different materials you mixed in. I see a limestone clad on the wall. We've got some glass here. How important was it to mix materials to help bring in this theme of the decor? Well, I had to warm it up actually because we've got a lot of glass and we've got the concrete floors. So I used the French limestone, which is soft. The mirror is, is actually sandblasted, so it's a sage green color. It doesn't, it's not clacky. And then the kitchen counters are also are granite and, and the dark woods ground the room. I think it just gives more interest, right? It gives more interest and you also want longevity and things that wear well. So we've got some very interesting materials, but also some interesting and beautiful pieces that you've curated here. Well, this is the 70s Moretti, a French artist who came to the States, and I fell in love with it. I love the sculpture quality of it. I think it works well with the view. Yes. So it found its home here. This is over 100 years old. This is Carlo Bugatti. It pivots, it rotates. Nice. And it's one of my museum pieces. I think it's, I like to mix things. And that's interesting because I think a lot of the times we're saying a lot of pieces here and the style influence yep. is of the 1970s decade, but you've also mixed in things from other eras. Yes. And it, it sort of, is that kind of how you really execute eclectic design well? I think that's the, that's the, that's the key is you have to mix the right pieces at the right time, not too much of one or the other. Okay, so would you say going with the dominant theme of one and yep. then kind of adding in little touches right. of others. Yeah, so the shell was the 70s, the roaring 70s, and from there I mixed my artistic pieces in, and then my own designs, which I did much later. Now, you've done that so beautifully. You, I, you. We've toured with you before, and I, I know you have such a great way of mixing different pieces that work so well together. Thank you. And uh, we're gonna check out the kitchen, which has got a lot of great design here, but first, let's see what Tak Renata from FHIA has for us today. We've been talking a lot recently about the importance of an in-home consultation, and this is a great example of what we're talking about. Most families, when they call us out to talk to them about their windows, they always start with hurricane protection as their need as to why they want to get this done. But in looking at this window and walking around the home uh, with the homeowner, you can see that they don't seal properly, they don't lock very well, so there's a lot of energy that's being lost. So there's just some things like that that we can always look at. We're homeowners, yes, we're thinking about hurricane protection, but also if we can save some of that money that we're giving the utility company, uh, it certainly would go a long way in helping the investment of the new windows. This is a perfect example of why it's so important to have an in-home consultation and really talk to a contractor that's looking to help you. These windows have clearly been changed out. The rest of the home, the windows in the home are all bronze frames. These are newer, they've been changed out. But as you can see, there's no hurricane protection. Uh, they didn't do anything energy efficient. And now here we are just a few years later and we're looking to change them out again to upgrade to hurricane protection and make the opening more energy efficient. We also want to address egress concerns in case there's a fire so that the family can get out safely. So we want to change it to a sliding window. But if they had had the right consultation originally, and we wouldn't be changing them again right now. So 
that initial consultation is vital in making sure you're making the right decisions for today as well as the future. Obviously when we're talking about an opening this size, there's some things that we want to discuss and understand about the functionality of the space, how often this door is being used, where the furniture is located in the home, and how we want to be able to access the backyard. We know we want to upgrade to hurricane protection and try to make the home more energy efficient. It gets direct sunlight right here, so we want to make sure we choose something that's really energy efficient uh, so that space will be a lot more comfortable. We've been going over these tips about how important it is for the in-home consultation for the last several weeks because it is critical to make sure you get the project that you're hoping for and that everything goes as smoothly as you'd hope. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Ted. So, Kevin, we are going to talk a little bit about your kitchen. We're actually not going to go inside because it's a galley kitchen and hard to maintain yes. social distance right now. Next to the living room, we find the galley kitchen. The goal here was to completely update it to go with any decade of design. So I think one of the most important things about designing with a certain decade in mind here, it's, it's more of in the furnishings and the accent pieces, but the bones of the space sort of in a, a design that's almost timeless, right? Yes. And that's what you did with the kitchen. That's what we did with the kitchen. Well, I used a cashmere granite, which is almost flawless. It doesn't show stains, a dark wood below, and then glass above. Garage doors actually are my favorite. So talk to us about why you like the garage door cabinets. A lot of people love those. Well, I find that cabinets that swing, I'll come up and bang my head on them, number one. And number two, I leave them open when I give a dinner party so someone can find where I have the extra bowl, where I have the extra plate, and that's I don't a, have to jump up and down. That's a that. great tip. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I've seen, I've designed a lot of kitchens at one time, and I think that is great when you want to have full access to the yeah. cabinets. So open and them up. Now, the backsplash. I love what you did with the backsplash. On one side I completely mirrored around the upper cabinets, which sort of makes it float. And then opposite I used a glass, sandblasted glass tile. So there's the contrast of a reflective surface and then a soft surface. Nice, nice mix again yeah. of materials yeah. as you did right out here as yeah. well. And you bought in a little bit more of that sandblasted glass. Yes, exactly. And the mirror as a backsplash I think is such a, a great way to create the illusion of more space. Yes. And uh, I think it also works within the 70s decor, a lot of, right? A lot of mirrored accents. Yes, it does. Accents it gives a window often when you don't have a window. And in my case, since it's a galley, I've opened up the kitchen, so I have the sunset and sunrise and the, and the mirror in between. And it also keeps it a little more timeless as well. Exactly. Coming up next, the 70s decor makes a bold statement in the master bedroom. Welcome back to Soko Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're here with interior designer Kevin Gray of Kevin Gray Design. Kevin, we have seen a few other rooms in your home and now we are in your master bedroom. The master bedroom is found on the opposite side of the living room. You have bought in elements of the decade of the 70s, a decade you love to add pieces in from for your design. My room, this is sort of my sanctuary, and I mixed the 70s in this room as well, along with my period pieces, and it's, it's, it feels good and it has multi-functions. Absolutely. I want to talk about the accessories because of course the accessories make the room, make the design, but they also are a great way to bring in a certain time period into your decor. Yep. And uh, you've got some lamps that are, those are from a very important uh, time period, right? They are. They're Fontana d'Arte, Italian, also from the roaring 70s. But it's probably the post 60s, the design, but it's 70s manufacturing. And I love the green glass. I love the lines, the curves, a little brass detail. So a lot of that brass detailing, and we've looked at a lot of the curved pieces you've had in yep. some of the other rooms, so exactly. kind of keeping within that. Yeah. And now this chaise has the a beautiful curvature as well. The chaise is Bauman, again, roaring 70s. I did it in the ostrich naga hide, and I think that works in the room. It's in one extra place for someone to sit. And it's a great piece, always nice in a master bedroom. Yeah. And uh, I love that yours is the original, like this is the original yeah. original from yeah. that time period, which is yeah. so great. But if you were looking to bring that into your home and couldn't get your hands on an original piece, there are, you were seeing a lot of furniture trending now that, that is reminiscent of a lot of these styles. Right, they're the reproductions today, yeah. If you want to curate a collection, I think you start by buying the pieces that you feel dearest to. And you'll find that those pieces will follow you around your life. I have the pieces now for 40 years and they go everywhere I go. You mix a lot of great patterns and you have such a great eye for mixing different materials, different patterns. 
pieces from different periods of time. Yes. I grounded the room by doing a padded wall. I picked up on that in France in the 50s and 60s. And I mixed the period pieces, even the old Venetian fabrics on pillows for my bed myself. Kevin, so let's talk a little more about the padded, uh, the upholstered wall. Yes. You have concrete flooring throughout. So is this something just a nice way to balance the sound as well as the look? Good point. That's the, exactly the reason why I did it because I don't want rugs in my room. And the padded wall absorbs the sound. I have the windows on one side, concrete here. If I didn't have the padded walls, it would bounce, the noise would bounce off. And, and it also is such visually a beautiful element to yeah. the room. It goes well, all the way up to the ceiling, wall to wall. Yeah. It's very strong and beautiful. Yeah, it makes actually a room a lot wider and taller when you do the pads. Yeah, it truly is. It is. It's yeah. like a, a very nice optical illusion mm. when you bring those upholstered panels wall to wall. Yeah. So Kevin, this side of the master bedroom is beautiful, but there is a lot more to this room and we're going to show you that when we come back. Next on SoFlo Home Project, see how open concept design can make a bold statement in the bedroom. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we're here with interior designer Kevin Gray in his own home. And Kevin, before the break, we saw your master bedroom, but it's not just a master bedroom that we're in, it's actually a master suite, yes. and it's actually one open space. So we're on the other side in your master bathroom. Right, it's a master bedroom, suite, bathroom, but I've, I've opened it all up. The most interesting design feature of this master bedroom is its open concept design. I did my own renovation when I walked into the room. There was a door here and I said, "Where that must be my bathroom. I opened it and there was one light bulb and eight doors. It looked like a storage room. <laughs> and I, I was unsuccessful to find the bathroom until the fifth door. <laughs> so I said, no, the tub's going here. So you had to, so you removed <laughs> most doors. Yeah, yeah. And the other ones that remain are glass. There you go. <laughs> so you could see through them somewhat. Yeah. Opaque glass. Yeah. So so the tub you wanted to be central, centrally located. Well, with the view over downtown Miami and the beach, what so better gorgeous. view could you have? And now it's very nicely segmented. I love this because it's almost like a sculptural piece in the middle of the room. And you've got a great light fixture yeah. as well. I centered it even with the room. So there's quarters on each side. Always think out of the box that if you sell it, someone doesn't want it. They put a wall here, pocket doors done. Such a designer thought there. <laughs> So we've talked about how you brought in elements of the 70s and in the kitchen, you kind of streamlined the home a yes. bit to allow your accessories and furnishings around it to pop. Yes. Did you go with the same concept here with the open bath? I did go with the same concept, a little more Bauhaus, how things are lined up and simple. And then I just went over to the top and did the Murano sconce because there was one of a kind. There Love was only that. one and that's all I needed. You usually don't find them single. They're great. It's the, yeah. the scale of that is actually very yeah. beautiful and perfect. And now you've used a lot of glass before in the other areas that we looked at by the kitchen and the foyer as well as mirror. And in here, of course, it's a bathroom, but such a nice balance of the mirrors reflecting and the glass. Well, I do the mirrors on several points. I do the cabinetries with my medicine cabinets and I always leave them open above. I don't know if you notice there's a light drop. Yes. And I do that in condominiums, all condominiums. I always remove above because there's like about a foot and a half of sheetrock. And I love the way I could see a little bit of the exposed yeah. concrete, yeah. which is also on the floor. It like yeah. ties it together so nicely. I always tie in an element of what was originally here. Very nice way to kind of keep the bones of the building. Yeah. And this building is from the era that you bought a lot in with, of the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of just gives a nod to the existing structure. Yeah. It, it, it tied it all in. Now, in this space, you also didn't do a traditional countertop. You did a tiled countertop uh, and backsplash. Yes. Yeah. Um, the reasoning for that was just bringing more color and more texture. Uh, bring more colors, textures is, is also more the mid-century feel, yes. which is the building. And I thought the mosaics worked there. I did the double sinks. So using tile that was kind of reminiscent of a lot of that time period yes. helps. Again, you're not dating the bathroom by no. any means, but you're giving a nod to the original bones of the building. Yeah, exactly. And it, those colors tied in with the sconce. So, you know, I tried it all to put it together. I love it. It actually ties in beautifully with yeah. all the green glass as well. And uh, such a nice soft mix of materials and works so nice at the master bedroom. Thank you so much. Well, Kevin, it's truly been a pleasure having you back and touring your own home. So seeing where you live and how you curate beautiful pieces to create your home. It's was been awesome. my pleasure and I'm most grateful that you came again. Thank, Thank you. you. And now let's check out what we have next week on SoFlo Home Project. 
we'll show you how to create big impact in your home decor by tackling the biggest surface areas of your home. And now let's see what Hunter Frankie from Soclo Health has for us tomorrow. Hunter, what's going on? Hey there, Elena. Tomorrow on SoFlow Health, we head for a walk and we talk about how to make the most out of your workouts. And speaking of workouts, Morgan has a fun workout you can do anywhere for you. Plus, we make a vegetarian style pad thai. It's absolutely delicious and I give you some insider tips that I've learned over the years on how to make the most out of certain exercises. It's all tomorrow right here at 1230 on Local 10. Thanks, Hunter. We'll definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, thanks for joining us this week. And we hope to see you again next week for another episode of SoFlo Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like home. SoFlo Home. If you missed any part of this home tour, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. You can also submit your design disasters, and you never know, we could be knocking on your door to help. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram.